Hi there, this is Ayush from Master Mechanical Design and let's start this lesson with a very simple but most confusing question of JDNT. Let's say we have a plate thickness of 10 mm plus minus 1 mm and a flatness tolerance of 0.5 mm is applied to this thickness dimension, not to any individual surface. So when a flatness tolerance attached to a dimension like this, or positioned over dimension line. It's the same thing and it means that flatness tolerance is controlling the flatness of median plane created by top and bottom surfaces. And this affects the flatness of both surfaces together. So my question is to you is what would be the maximum envelope boundary of this plate thickness? including the size deviation plus minus 1 mm and flatness deviation 0.5 mm or in GDNT term what would be the actual matting envelope size for this thickness. So well as there is no modifiers are applied in feature control frame no MMC or LMC modifier are present with flatness tolerance. So according to GDNT rule 2 we default to regardless of feature size condition. Regardless of feature size means the flatness tolerance 0.5 mm and the size tolerance plus minus 1 mm are independent to each other. The plate thickness can vary anywhere between 9 to 11 mm and the flatness can be vary from 0 to 0 0.5 mm. And there is no direct relation between the size variation and flatness variation. So the maximum actual mating envelope, the maximum boundary condition of this plate will occur when the plate is produced at its MMC means 11 mm throughout the thickness and at the same time if the plate is bent in such a way that creating the maximum flatness deviation 0.5 mm. So the outer boundary, the actual meeting envelope would be 11 mm plus 0.5 mm flatness deviation. So the actual meeting envelope would be 11.5 mm, right? It seems straightforward, but if you are familiar with GDNT rule 1, this might not seem quite correct. GDNT rule 1 known as perfect form at MMC means at MMC at maximum material condition the form of an individual regular feature of size must be perfect. Perfect form means perfect flatness, perfect straightness, perfect circularity and perfect cylindricity. So if this plate has thickness 10 plus minus 1 mm at its MMC which is 11 mm the flatness should be perfect. In other words, when the plate is at 11 mm thickness, no flatness deviation should be allowed. The plate should be perfectly flat with no bending of 0.5 mm. Yes, if the plate thickness is not at MMC, not at 11 mm, say 10 mm, then flatness deviation is acceptable, that's fine. But when the plate thickness is exactly 11 mm throughout, which means it's at MMC, then according to GDNT rule 1, the flatness deviation must be 0. So the actual meeting envelope, the outer boundary should be 11, not 11.5. Confusing, isn't it? Which interpretation is correct? The first one where GDNT rule 2 overridden GDNT rule 1 or the second one where GDNT rule 1 overridden rule 2, overridden the regardless of feature size. What do you think? You can pause the video and let us know in comment. But this can be tricky for many of us. And without fully understanding of these rules, GDNT can feel like a mystery. In most of situation, GDNT rule 1 and 2 applies by default. But in some situation, GDNT rule 1 doesn't apply. It gets overridden by rule 2. And in some situation, GDNT rule 2 doesn't apply. 
So to clearly understand this, we have to deeply understand the both rules, rule 1 and rule 2. Not only what they are, but their limitations as well. So in this video, we will learn everything about GDNT rules, rule 1 and rule 2, what they are, what are their application, where they apply and where they doesn't apply, with practical example with flatness tolerance. So end up the video you will be master to this tricky situation. So let's start with GDNT rule 1. So GDNT rule 1 also known as envelope principle or Taylor principle and it state that form of a regular feature of size is controlled by its limit size. It means the surface of a regular feature of size cannot extend beyond the envelope created by its limit size. MMC and LMC. For example, if we have a plate of thickness 10 mm plus minus 1 mm, both the top and bottom surface of this plate must be a stay within the envelope defined by the limit size 11 mm and 9 mm. And this rule apply by default if you are making drawing in GDNT ASME Y14.5 standard. Now, if the plate is exactly at MMC, means at 11 mm thick throughout the entire length, the MMC boundary is completely filled with material. And in this condition, if the plate is bent even slightly, the surface would extend beyond the MMC boundary, which is not allowed as per GDNT rule 1. So at MMC, the plate form must be perfect it must be perfectly flat and this is why in industries GDNT rule 1 rephrased as perfect form at MMC. Perfect form means perfect flatness, straightness, circularity and slenderity. Form deviations are only allowed if the part is not at MMC. Now you can say that Ayus, well we understood what is GDNT rule 1. But what is the benefit of this rule? Why when this rule is made in the first place? So GDNT rule 1 ensures the proper assembly of individual feature of size with other. For instance, let's say we have a shaft that need to be fit in a hole with clearance fit at 7G6. So as a designer, we specify G6 on the shaft. And let's assume the shaft nominal size is 20 mm. So at G6 fit, the tolerance would be minus 0.01 mm to minus 0.02 mm. So the shaft diameter can be ranged from 19.98 mm to 19.99 mm. And for 20 mm hole at H7, the tolerance will be 0 to 0.02 mm. Meaning the whole diameter can be ranged from 20 to 20.02 mm. So GDNT rule 1 ensures the proper assembly of the shaft and hole. So what would be the worst condition for this assembly? Well, the worst condition will occur when the shaft is produced at largest size, which is 19.99 in this case. And at the same time, the hole is produced at the smallest size, which is 20 mm in this case. So the minimum clearance would be 20 minus 19.99 mm, 0.01 mm, only 10 micron. That's a very tiny gap. Any form deviation in shaft or hole could easily eliminate this a small clearance. So both the shaft and hole must be perfectly straight and perfectly cylindrical to maintain this fit. But the good news is you don't need to calculate and apply any geometrical form control like a straightness or cylindricity or circularity either to the shaft or the hole. Because of GDNT rule 1, when the shaft and hole both are at MMC, it means when the shaft is at largest size and the hole is at a smallest size, the worst assembly condition, their form, their shape must be perfect. 
or else the part will be rejected. If there is any form deviation in a hole or shaft, it cannot occur at MMC condition. Any form deviation must be within the limit defined by MMC and LMC boundary. And this is why GDNT rule 1 exists to relieve the designer to worrying about the worst assembly condition. So whenever me designing a part who is to be fit together, I do not worry about their form deviations. I do not apply any additional GDNT controls over either hole or the shaft to ensure their fitment. GDNT rule 1 take care of the form deviation of these parts at the worst assembly condition. I just have to define the right fit at 7, G6 or whatever. Now let's understand the limitations of GDNT rule 1. So first is GDNT rule 1 applies only to the individual feature of size, not to the irregular feature of size or any other type of features. For in-depth understanding on this topic, you can watch this video later, but for now, Let's focus on this rectangular block, three-dimensional block actually, with given sizes. So the thickness 10 mm plus minus 1 mm is parallel and opposed surface. So this is an individual regular feature of size. Similarly, the 20 mm plus minus 1 mm is another individual regular feature of size. So GDNT rule 1 will apply to the both feature of sizes, but separately. It doesn't apply to this entire rectangle block as a whole. This means the form of the length and width will be controlled within its limit size. If both sizes are at MMC, say 21 mm and 11 mm, their flatness has to be perfect. But GDNT rule 1 would not control the angles at the corners between the length and width. So the block may not be perfect rectangle even if the both sides are at MMC. And this leads us to second limitation of GDNT rule 1. That rule 1 doesn't control the orientation variation within limit size. For instance, if we have a 90 degree angle, at MMC of this size, this angle isn't guaranteed to be perfect. This can be something like this. So you will need to apply additional perpendicularity control if perpendicularity is needed. So just keep in mind, GDNT rule 1 only control the form deviation within the limit size, which are flatness, straightness, circularity and cylindricity, nothing else. The third limitation of GDNT rule 1 that it doesn't apply to non-rigid part like rubber component or belt or any flexible component. It also doesn't apply to the stock size or the raw material size on drawings. So these are three key limitations of GDNT rule 1. Now GDNT rule 1 can be also overridden in three different ways. But to understand it, first we have to understand GDNT rule 2. So GDNT rule 2 states, regardless of feature size, applies with respect to individual tolerance and regardless of material boundary, applies with respect to individual datum reference, when no modifying symbol is specified in GDNT feature control frame. In this video, we will only focus on regardless of feature size that is applied with respect to individual tolerance. The concept of regardless of material boundary RMB with respect to datum feature reference is a bit more advanced. So we will cover in future lesson when we discuss the datum and datum feature reference. So rule 2 essentially defines the default condition in feature control frame. Regardless of feature size applies by default when no modifying symbol MMC or LMC are present means when we apply a flatness tolerance to the surface, the flatness tolerance would be independent to the size tolerance. Not only the flatness, almost all the geometrical controls like 
position control, straightness, perpendicularity, circularity, run out, total run out, geometric tolerance will be independent of the size variation. For example, let's say this plate thickness is 10 mm plus minus 0.5 mm and a flatness tolerance is applied to the top surface. So if the thickness of this plate is let's say 9 mm at LMC, flatness will be 0.5 mm. If the thickness of plate is produced at 10 mm, flatness, the allowable deviation will be remain 0.5 mm. Even if plate is produced at 10.5 mm, flatness will be remain 0.5 mm. However, as per GDNT rule 1, if the plate is at MMC 11 mm, it must be within size limit. So no flatness deviation is allowed here. Meaning, GDNT rule 2 is overridden by rule 1. The flatness variation must be contained within 11 mm envelope. But when we apply a flatness control to the size tolerance, it doesn't apply to any surface. It applies to the median plane to the both surface. A derived median plane is an imperfect plane formed by the center point of the all line segment bounded by feature of size. So applying 0.5 mm flatness tolerance to the sized dimension means this median plane flatness should be stay within 0.5 mm bent width, controlling the both surface together. And in this situation, things change. Rule 1 doesn't apply. Instead, Rule 2 take precedence. Means flatness tolerance will be applied regardless of feature size even at MMC. Meaning, even if the plate is at MMC 11 mm, it can still have a flatness variation up to 0.5 mm. This means the actual envelope size could be 11 mm plus flatness of 0.5 mm, totaling 11.5 mm. You got the answer. Here the perfect form at MMC requirement from rule 1 is overridden. Same with the straightness control. Let's consider a shaft of diameter 10 plus minus 1 mm and a straightness tolerance of 0.5 mm is applied to the size dimension. So the shaft size can be range from 9 mm to 11 mm. And even at 11 mm at MMC, it can have the straightness variation up to 0.5 mm, making the envelope boundary 11.5 mm. So in summary, GDNT rule 1 can be overridden in three ways. 1. Applying a flatness tolerance to the size dimension of a planar regular feature of size. Number 2. Applying the straightness tolerance to the size or the dimension of a cylindrical regular feature of size. Number 3 is specifying the independency symbol to the regular feature of size dimension. So this was all about GDNT rules, GDNT rule 1 and rule 2. And now we can explore the each geometrical controls in detail. But before we dive into any geometrical control, first I want you to understand a very important concept of GDNT which are worst boundary condition and virtual condition. So the next video should be on your screen or you can check the description. Thank you so much for watching.